sincere. <laughs> thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, uh, let me thank Honorable Roko, although <laughs> he's stretching his luck uh, that he wants to abrogate himself the responsibility of the Speaker to allocate who starts. But he's a good man, Honorable Speaker, and I rise to support uh, uh, this motion, Honorable Speaker, on the supplementary estimates. The first supplementary estimates in this financial year, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as the Chair and the Vice Chair have uh, very well articulated, this first supplementary comes in the backdrop of a very difficult time for our economy and indeed the global economy. Honorable Speaker, uh, just to add on to the issues that the Chairman and the Vice Chair have alluded to, the global economy, Honorable Speaker, as we all know, is still in the mode, recovery mode post-COVID. And this recovery post-COVID, Honorable Speaker, has had huge ramifications on growing economies like ours and others in the developing world, and especially informed by happenings beyond the borders of our developing economies. Happenings in the Americas, Honorable Speaker, happening in the, in, uh, the Western world, in Europe, and now, Honorable Speaker, even happening in the Middle East with the war between the Hamas and uh, Israelis, Honorable Speaker, in a way uh, hugely impacting the supply chain around the oil and uh, gas sector. And Honorable Speaker, because we are not an oil producing country, but uh, an oil consuming country, any interruptions to the supply chain of oil emanating from the war either in Ukraine and Russia, between Ukraine and Russia, or the war in the Middle East will have an impact on our local economy, Honorable Speaker. And we have seen that we even with the uh, rise, the consistent rise of oil prices, global oil prices uh, uh, in the world, and also in the distortions of our foreign exchange rates uh, against the hard currencies, Honorable Speaker. And uh, those who understand, Honorable Speaker, will know that uh, the global oil prices also have a huge impact on our exchange rate, especially that against the dollar, because most of this crude oil is traded, and even refined oil is traded in dollars, Honorable Speaker. And the demand for crude oil or refined oil into our economy, in a way, also helps to drive up the cost of the dollar against the shilling, Honorable Speaker. And why not, Honorable Speaker, as I've been said, why not for the government-to-government -government, uh, uh, contractual arrangements that guarantees, one, that we have adequate oil supplies in our country, Honorable Speaker, and with prices that are hedged, and therefore we are not subject to very frequent fluctuations of uh, the oil, oil, oil uh, prices in the world, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the other issues that confront us as we work on these first supplementary estimates, Honorable Speaker, you know we had challenges with the implementation of the Finance Act 2023 with all the cases that went to court, and that in a way impacted our revenue collection. Honorable Speaker, you remember the Kenya Revenue Authority have already reported that within the first quarter, they had a shortfall of about 79.3 billion on revenue turnovers uh, from July, August, and September. I am glad, Honorable Speaker, to note that in the month of October, all the revenue streams that KRA uh, is collecting from, be it VAT on fuel, be it excise duty, be it our income tax, all our revenue streams and our uh, tax instruments are performing now and at least. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I, I was happy to note in one of the reports by KRA that uh, tax, taxes, especially around fuel, are now performing above target, at almost 106% above target. And there is hope that if that progresses, Honorable Speaker, uh, then we shall be able to catch up with the revenue estimates. It's surprising, Honorable Speaker, because there are those who have argued that our taxation on uh, fuel has discouraged Kenyans from consuming fuel. And they will be shocked from uh, estimates and data coming from IPRA and KRA. The consumption of fuel in this country has 
indeed done the opposite, surprisingly. The consumption of fuel has gone up, and that is why even revenues from the consumption of uh, fuel, Honorable Speaker, are uh, performing. I hear somebody behind me uh, speaking about consumption of alcohol. I'm speaking about consumption of fuel, not alcohol. I don't care, Honorable Speaker, whether the consumption of alcohol goes up or goes down, uh, so long as they can pay taxes. <laughs> uh, but fuel, in a big way, because those who have been uh, listening to those critics of this administration, Honorable Speaker, those are some of the things they have been saying. That even the optimal revenue uh, tax, uh, uh, the, the, the tax uh, generation curve, we have reached the optimal uh, level of the curve that we can no longer generate more revenue from some of these taxes. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I just want, uh, want to speak to those critics of this administration and tell them we are yet to get there. We indeed, VAT on fuel is the first evidence that indeed that is an area where we were yet to exploit our opportunities to broaden our tax base, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we have had other challenges, Honorable Speaker, besides those of revenue, the challenges that have been alluded to of uh, foreign exchange uh, uh, fluctuations and interest rate rate uh, uh, increments both at the domestic level and even uh, on uh, the international market and as i said honorable speaker if you look at what happened in the americas after the covid pandemic the american uh, government had a lot of subsidies that they were giving to their people which created a huge inflationary situation in their country and therefore to help mop up the excess liquidity in the market they increased their fed rates honorable speaker almost to 5.5 5.6 almost six percent and that in a way has affected our interest rates uh, locally honorable speaker besides what the chair of the budget committee alluded to that we've also had to increase our local interest rates to be able to attract uh, uh, investments into our country especially from funds that come to invest in our country honorable speaker in government securities and with that honorable speaker that has meant that our uh, our cost of financing or cost of servicing our debt has also gone up as interest rates go up. Honorable Speaker, members will note from these supplementary estimates close to 145 billion shillings uh, is expenditure that is going to service our debt. Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from these people making noise behind me, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, order, order. Senior Counsel. Honorable Speaker, I was saying. Proceed. Honorable Speaker, I was saying 145 billion shillings going to service debt. And again, Honorable Speaker, those who are pontificating about how good they are in fighting for Kenyans on the cost of living are never honest enough to tell Kenyans that the public, huge burden of public debt that we are now having to pay an extra 145 billion shillings for was occasioned by bad economic macroeconomic policies under a regime that they served in and that they supported honorable speaker and we must be honest honorable speaker and i say this with all due respect to my colleagues even those of us those that i am engaging with in the national dialogue committee because honorable speaker i have seen them pontificate on the cost of living demand that we must now implement policies that we as a Kenya Kwanzaa administration never went out to Kenyans to campaign on. Because we campaigned on the backdrop, Honorable Speaker, of uh, workable macroeconomic policies that will ensure that this country is on a trajectory of economic recovery, anchored on sustainable macroeconomic policies, not short-term, populist, politically expedient, policies of subsidizing uh, consumption, Honorable Speaker. In these supplementary estimates, Honorable Speaker, the chair of uh, the Energy Committee and the chair of budget will tell you we are having now to pay 4 billion shillings for subsidizing fuel, not bills incurred by this administration, but fuel subsidy bills incurred by the previous administration, Honorable Speaker. And when we told them that the policies of subsidizing consumption that they were pursuing 
were not helping this country, Honorable Speaker, they will not listen to us. I say this, Honorable Speaker, because I sit at a place where I have seen people now begin to use the question of the cost of living to play populist politics. I must thank the Budget and Appropriations Committee and members of this House who have stood to do what is right for the country and for posterity rather than doing what is populist because it's very easy, Honorable Speaker, as I said during the State of the Nation address debate, for His Excellency the President to wake up today and announce very populist policies, subsidize UNGA. Well, as UNGA now, Honorable Speaker, I was in from uh, a friend of mine called Ouma in uh, Umoja, sending me screenshots of a supermarket in uh, Umoja where they are now buying Pembe at 157 some of the most expensive brands of unga therefore if we went if those who purport to have gone to the streets on account of the cost of living and they use the sufuria and unga as the excuse honorable speaker today when unga was at 210 they were in the streets today you want to threaten us that you can go back to the streets on account of unga at 157 for the most expensive brands there are brands that are going for even 140 shillings we must drop this pretense, Honorable Speaker. We must speak to the issues. I have seen others attempt to uh, excite and incite university students on account of funding, the new funding model, Honorable Speaker. And it's unfortunate, Honorable Speaker, that even very senior leaders in this country, Honorable Speaker, speak to issues that they have absolutely no information on. They have not sought to understand what is this housing agenda, Honorable Speaker. They have not sought to understand what is this new funding model of our universities, Honorable Speaker. Today, we have 15 billion shillings here. 14, actually, Honorable Speaker. 10.3 million shillings going to the university's funding model to help to the Higher Education Loans Board. Yet, you see political leaders attempting to incite our university students over help. Shame on them, Honorable Speaker. The Budget and Appropriations Committee and the National Treasury have 10.3 billion shillings to go to the Higher Education Loans Board. Shame on to them, Honorable Speaker, 3.6 billion is going to university scholarships under the new funding model. Our school capitation, Honorable Speaker, the junior secondary school, another 6.5 billion. The Kenya National Examinations Council to ensure that our children who have sat for their exams are marked and results delivered in time, another 2.8 billion. Our TVET institutions for funding, for the new funding model, 4.6. Honorable Speaker, on account of uh, the Kenya University and Colleges Placement Services and the funding of the new uh, um, universities and colleges funding model, Honorable Speaker, you can see 14 plus 4.6 billion is close to 20 billion shillings going to fund our university and college students. That is what a responsible and responsive government does to its people to ensure that our parents parents who have students in Tibet, parents who have students in junior secondary, parents who have children in our universities do not have to incur the burden of having to pay very high fees Honorable Speaker for their children in universities by us appropriating adequate resources to the Higher Education Loans Board to ensure that they fund and give scholarships to children from the most vulnerable of our backgrounds, Honorable Speaker. I know many of these leaders, Honorable Speaker, even very senior leaders, have had their own children attend public universities and benefit from the old funding model that never cared to know whether you are a son of a member of parliament, whether you are a son of a governor, whether you are a son of a president, whether you are a son of a former prime minister, or a son of a former vice president, or a son of a sitting deputy president, and they would fund you at the same level as a son of a hustler. The new funding model, Honorable Speaker, is paying focus to the downtrodden, the most vulnerable of our children, so that members of parliament sons and daughters of former prime ministers and former vice presidents. Those are people who can afford to pay for university fees for their children. They pay for their children, but the sons and daughters of hustlers get a 100% scholarship. They get funding from help, Honorable Speaker. This is what this supplementary budget is doing, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, 
we in an era where now we are talking about COVID and El Nino, not COVID, sorry, El Nino rains. And this El Nino rains on a speaker came with some unmitigated things or emergencies that were never focused on a speaker at the time we were doing the budget at the beginning of the year. And we were never able to provide adequate resources to deal with post-harvest losses. The president did announce that we shall be, even during the State of the Nation address, that 100 mobile maize dryers and milk coolers are being procured. These resources, Honorable Speaker, you will see 2.4 billion shillings going towards the, fertilizer, the crop post-harvest to deal with the, the issue of maize dryers to ensure that the harvest, the extra 18 million bags harvested by patriotic farmers across the country will not go to waste on account of the heavy rains that will have mobile dryers farmers will be able to pay only 70 shillings down from 350 shillings to be able to dry their maize and ensure that there is unga available in the sufurias that some of my colleagues here are putting on their heads and pretending that they are leading what they call a sufuria revolution there is no sufuria revolution there is now a revolution to ensure that we are able to subsidize production and give Kenyans affordable food. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, not just maize, even milk. There is likely to be a milk glut with the, the heavy rains, Honorable Speaker. Our, maize farm, our, our milk farmers and dairy uh, producers are likely to produce milk. We must ensure that we have milk coolers. We are able to convert that milk to uh, powder milk to store for any eventualities during the dry season, Honorable Speaker. And there are many other interventions, Honorable Speaker, touching on security, universal health coverage, Honorable Speaker. Although I have reservation, Honorable Speaker, I have seen reallocations where we are reallocating 200 million shillings, Honorable Speaker, to go to some primate research institute. One minute. Honorable one. Speaker, I was saying, how do we allocate 200 million shillings to research about monkeys? Because this primary research, Honorable Speaker, is not researching on universal health coverage for human beings. How do you remove 200 million shillings from universal health coverage to go and research about monkeys? I know there's a cabinet secretary who told us they would relocate monkeys from some forest to another forest, Honorable Speaker. I don't know what research is this that we want to fund with 300 million shillings. I want to propose that the, the committees in charge should be proposing amendments this afternoon to remove that money and take it back to more, uh, more, 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 more sustainable programs, Honorable Speaker. It, worst case scenario, take it back to universal health coverage. How do we start taking care of monkeys at the expense of human beings, Honorable Speaker? Surely. Honorable Speaker, with that, I beg to support and I, I want to call to shame those who want to use the cost of living as an excuse to incite Kenyans. We have sustainable macroeconomic policies that will deal decisively with the question of the cost of living to Kenyans. Let us not play politics with it. Let us not use uh, uh, the global economic challenges that we have around the world to try and incite the Kenyan people. They have a government that is responsive, a government that thinks about them, cares about them, and is dealing with their issues in a more sustainable manner other than the politically expedient uh, avenues that we saw in the past on our speaker. With that, I beg to support. Very well, leader. Uh, and uh, you have really spoken on uh, the research on monkeys. And I know very well that uh, even uh, teachers outside there just says who needs to be absorbed. Maybe that's where we should take it. At the risk of uh, contributing, let me allow the chair of budget to make